Hey, this is Craig Ballantyne. Today, I'm going to solve one of the biggest problems in the lives of high performers, and that is showing you how to never hit snooze again. I once coached a very successful entrepreneur from California. He was a, a younger man, and he came to me and said, Craig, I've tried all types of snooze buttons and alarms. I have this one called the sonic boom that it's so loud, it shakes the windows of my house. And I was like, sonic boom, that sounds insane. Who would actually use this? You must be the only person in the world. And now you go to Amazon, there are 24,000 reviews on this product. That's how much of a problem the snooze button is. And so I'm going to solve this for America and the world today. Now, there's a couple of reasons why you should never, ever hit snooze. The first one is physiological. And it's boring. But the second one is super exciting and it's going to totally dial you in for life. Now, if you take a look at this, this is a 90-minute sleep cycle. And I'm a big believer in the power of a 90-minute sleep cycle. It's very important. If I wake up 40 minutes before my alarm, I realize oh, I'm not even really going to get into a full sleep cycle. I'm going to get to deep sleep and immediately I'm going to get out if I have an alarm set. So it's almost not worth me going back to bed. Maybe I'll have a nap later on or get to bed earlier the next night. So just understand like the 90 minute sleep cycle is a real thing. It looks like this. We go through multiple sleep cycles every night and that's how we get our seven and a half or nine hours of sleep. Now you understand that at the start of this, when you hit snooze, you will go into a little bit of sleep and then the snooze button will wake up, wake you up before you start to get down to that deep sleep at the bottom. And then you'll be even groggier. So that's the physiological reason you do not want to hit snooze. Every time you do that, every, if, like, if you hit three times, you go groggy, groggier, groggiest. And then that's just going to throw off your day. Plus, you're already behind the eight ball. You're rushing around. You're late. You're going to be in traffic. You're going to be late to the meeting. You do not want to hit snooze. You hit snooze, you're going to lose. Now, on the flip side, my friend Bedro Schoolian has a much better reason for not hitting snooze. And he says... If you hit snooze, you're telling your hopes and dreams that they can wait. And, you know, there's here are two pictures of two families, just not the type of people who would hit snooze because they're living dream lives. OK, so if you're doing this for your family, for your wealth, for your health, for your fitness, for your faith, you will not hit snooze on any of those things. Would you hit snooze on your child's future? Would you hit snooze on your faith? Would you hit snooze on the health of your own body? No, you will not hit snooze. Please do not do that. The other thing that if you hit snooze, you have already broken a promise to yourself before the day has even started, right? So if you go to bed, like, okay, I'm going to get up at 6.30. Brain, I am promising you, I will get up at 6.30 tomorrow. Man, you set the alarm. And the alarm goes off at 6.30 in the morning. You hit snooze. You said to yourself the uh, yesterday, you said, hey, listen, yesterday, self, I'm not keeping your promise. And so now part of your brain realizes I'm not a promise keeper. Therefore, I'm not confident. Therefore, I'm not successful. So those are three powerful reasons not to hit snooze. And this is uh, you know, my hopes and dreams of my wife, Michelle, on our wedding day, cutting our Instagram cake. Uh, we met through Instagram. We have a lot of, we had our cake maker make a bunch of photos, put them on there. They were edible photos. Um, but I get up early in the morning because I need to go to work for my family. I And before I met Michelle, I got up in, early in the morning so that I could get my work done so that I could go find her. That's the type of mentality I take around my hopes and dreams. They are not to be snoozed upon and neither are yours. So the problem is once you hit snooze, you get into bad habit, right? Bad habit in the top right of the vicious cycle. Bad habit leads to bad feeling. Bad feeling leads to another bad habit, which leads to the cycle where you just spend the entire day disappointing yourself losing your confidence, not getting ahead, being busy in activity, but not full of accomplishment. And so what we want to do is break that cycle. And the way that we break that cycle is one by not hitting the snooze, but the reverse alarm is one of those circuit breakers, right? So if we find ourselves constantly hitting snooze, it's because we don't have that reverse alarm at night. The reverse alarm allows us to get to bed on time, allows us to get to sleep well, allows us to get into deep sleep, along with the 103210 formula that I'm gonna go through as well. You wanna put your reverse alarm on your phone now. So schedule a daily alarm that goes off an hour before your bedtime. And when you do that, you turn off all your electronics. You put on your blue light blockers if you wanna wear them. 
You do old school activities. You wind down. I read and reading for me is like a sleeping pill. So I read nonfiction, autobiographies, and I don't get wound up. And, you know, Michelle says sometimes I'm falling asleep on the couch. So we go up to bed, pass out, and have a great sleep. I have so much deep sleep before midnight because of the system that I've set up. And I used to use an alarm when I was getting in the habit of getting up at four o'clock in the morning. Now I never use an alarm. I have literally not used an alarm for 18 months because I just have this sleep system in place. I'm sleeping well, energetic, pumped up to do these videos. And so if you need to start kicking this habit, the first thing that you do is not get the sonic boom. You don't get a bucket of cold water that's going to wake you up in the morning. I remember when I struggled to get up in the morning, I thought, well, what if I just, you know, I, when I woke up and hit snooze, I just like chewed a caffeine pill. Like that's how crazy my mind was around this thing. And I knew that wasn't the fix. I was like putting a Band-Aid on a bleeding neck wound. I had to go back and figure out what was right for me. And it was using this reverse alarm. It was getting to bed at the same time every night and getting up at the same time every day that has just allowed me to be more successful and live a much better life. I'd much rather live the life that I do now, getting to bed on time, than staying up a little bit later to watch some Netflix or you know, have a drink at a pub, okay? I'm living life now in, on my own terms. So set that reverse alarm on your phone right now. It's the first huge step. The next thing is put your phone to bed. If you possibly can, I want you to think about this. How far can you go with removing your phone and the snooze button from your sleeping area? So if you're, you know, like I once was a young man, you can have, or a young woman, single, you can have your phone in another room. You can have an old school alarm. You can do all of these things. You can have your phone across the room that you have to get up out of bed and go turn it off. You can do all of those things that make it much more difficult for you to hit snooze. So we're looking at breaking the cycle. Now, if you sleep with three kids in, not three kids in your room, but three kids in rooms next to you, plus a spouse or partner in your bed, you are gonna have a much more difficult time. So you know that's when you get into the, like using the vibrational alarms and that sort of stuff that doesn't wake up the spouse if you wanna get up an hour earlier before them. And then you sneak out of bed. You know, I've uh, mastered the art of sliding out of bed like a ninja and getting downstairs without waking up Michelle. I'm not perfect, but I'm pretty darn good at it. What I did for a long time was I had my phone across the room and that built in me the system for getting up quickly. So think about how far you can go with this. It's either the extreme of having the phone across the room or in another room. Or you have to use the, the best thing that you can possibly do is the vibration alarm. Just do as much as you can and make it difficult for you to hit snooze. I do not recommend the sonic boom alarm if you have a family, a young family, okay? Obviously, sleep, sleep is critical for them. But you need to figure out how can you get up. Maybe you have an Apple Watch that goes off. Maybe you have your phone beside you that goes off. I don't like sleeping with my phone right beside me. I try and keep it six feet away and in airplane mode. And if you can keep your phone in airplane mode, that's better than having the text go off at night. Um, if you can use an alarm that isn't related to your phone, if you can just you know, turn your phone physically off, even better. But again, it's going to be up to you to how far you can take this. But you need to understand that at the end of the day, you can't rely on this system. You have to rely on the, your big why for getting out of bed on time, telling your hopes and dreams that they cannot wait. That's what's going to get you out of bed. So problem is that a lot of people, you know, they lounge, they stay up too late, you know, they don't have the reverse alarm on their phone. And yeah, they're having a good time. And hours can disappear into the void in the evening because of social media, because of television. One of my friends just sent me a message this morning or overnight. I didn't get it until uh, later this morning after doing some work. And he talked about how he had found a politician's Instagram who he didn't like. And he spent 35 minutes like getting fired up, going through it. And he said, I can't, like I looked up and 35 minutes had gone. And that's what happens. Social media is built to be addictive. Our phones are built to be addictive. And you can go into like a time machine you know, if you're not controlling your phone at night. And then that's what leads you getting to bed late. And when you get to bed late, you become this person down in the bottom right who just does not want to get out of bed. 
and it's going to suck away your time. It's going to destroy your dreams. And I cannot let that happen to you because you were not put here to scroll social media. You were put here for greatness and to have a huge impact in your business, in your career, in your personal life, for your kids, for your family, for your faith, whatever it is, you were put here to do some great things. And it doesn't come from hitting snooze or staying up late. That's why I put so much love and energy into these videos. The third thing you need to do is fully shut down. The blue blockers are not enough. So when somebody says to me, yeah, I just wear blue blockers, but I don't turn my laptop off until right before I go to bed. And I will challenge you on that, that even if you're sleeping okay now, if you do the reverse alarm, you shut it down, you turn off all electronics, you continue wearing the blue blockers uh, for, the, for the lights in your house. Um, but if you can turn those down dim and just relax into sleep for that last hour, you will sleep better and you will get back that time. Like if you think, oh, I'm just going to work right up until I go to sleep. Well, first of all, the work that you're doing is stimulating your mind. Plus, there's always going to be that one message that comes in of just a few minutes before you turn your laptop off. And now your brain is going a mile a minute thinking of snappy comebacks or thinking of how to solve this problem. And as much as I believe that your brain can do some great work overnight on some of the problems and fix them and solve them for you so you have solutions in the morning, I don't think that giving it a problem right before bed is the best way for you to wind down. So fully shut everything down. Blue blockers are not an excuse to keep watching Netflix until the minute before you go to bed. And I was raised in a family where everybody watched TV before bed. You know, my mom watched TV on the couch downstairs and slept on and off. Um, you know, she'd fall asleep at eight, wake back up, watch a show at nine and fall asleep at 10. And, you know, she finally go to bed at like 1130. Meanwhile, my dad went up to bed really early and just watched television until he fell asleep in front of it. So I thought that was normal, but that's not normal. That's not healthy. And that's not a good way to have a good night's sleep. So you got to fully shut down so that you can sleep well. We're going to hack your sleep in the next video. I've got very, very detailed information on how you can get a better night's sleep. In fact, one of my clients who I actually do a little success story on in the next video, we've taken him from, you know, he gets an aura ring sleep score of like 60, sometimes in the 50s to in the 80s, just by making some changes. And it only took 10 days. It was absolutely a game changer for him. And just understand you want a cool room, a dark room, earplugs, eye mask, go old school, old lady like I do. I wear uh, an eye mask and earplugs, but when I do, I sleep well. When I don't, when I travel and forget them, I don't sleep as well. So make sure that you are going to hack your sleep using our systems that we're going to share with you in a moment. And then you got to wake and shake. You got to wake up and get right to it. Shake off the snooze button and get to it. Not uh, the wake and bake, not the wake and go back to sleep, but the wake and shake. All right. You're a, you're a mover and a shaker. So you're going to wake up and you're going to shake it up. We need the extreme systems that we've talked about. Go as far as you can to remove the snooze button from your immediate vicinity so you can't turn it off. Um, but then at the end of the day, make sure you rewatch the how to change your identity video because it's really about the identity. I'm the type of person who never hits snooze. I have not hit snooze probably since about 2015. When, you know, and that was when I was having two or three drinks per night. Uh, not every night, like once or twice a month, I would have two or three drinks. And the next morning I would hit the snooze button cause and effect. I was like, oh, every time I drink, I hit the snooze button and I have a horrible day and I get really frustrated and I don't see the progress that I want to make in my life. I have a lot of activity. Well, I actually don't have a lot of activity and I don't have a lot of accomplishment and I'm exhausted. Well, something has to change and you may not change overnight, but as I mentioned, the person, uh, my client has changed in 10 days. You can make dramatic improvements in your sleep. So use some of the extreme systems, but then also change your identity, change your identity to that person who takes sleeping seriously so that they can get up and perform at a high level. And you're not going to throw away your life. What gets measured gets managed. So track and test your results so that you're doing the right things that are going to get you the right results. If things are not working, then that means you have to change what you are doing and you can either change for the better, you can change for the worse. Change one thing, just like a scientific experiment, you change one variable, you see the response of it, and then you decide whether to continue with it or to stop it. Is it helping you or is it hurting you and harming you? That's what you always have to be thinking about. And then remember, it's either insanity or, 
or you're getting accountability. Up until this point, if you struggle with sleep, you've never gotten a great blueprint. You have that now. But if you've tried a whole bunch of stuff and never stuck with it, it's because you don't have accountability. You need to lean into the accountability. The de definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and expecting different results. So having a glass of wine right before bed and you don't ever feel refreshed in the morning, but keep on having a glass of wine before bed, that's insanity. But if you decide to make changes and you want to be held accountable, that's where you get the definition of results. So please make those changes. Please get serious about your sleep because your sleep is so important for not hitting snooze, keeping the promises in your life and achieving your hopes and dreams. And remember, we have the accountability for you. You're going to do group calls with your tribe. You're going to get your weekly questions through email. And then when you're ready to take it to the next level, we have a one-on-one -on -one coach who's ready to work with you. Just make sure that you get in contact with us and we'll help you get started on that. All right. So let's get ready and let's move into some sleep hacking because that is going to be the ultimate game changer for your high performance.